Hi there, I'm Jonathan Weinberg, and this is my first YouTube video. I've decided to use YouTube because I thought it would be a great way to introduce people to a project that I've just finished that I've been working on for the last two years. It's a series of illustrations of Genesis um, from the Bible. It's a portfolio of 16 prints that are uh, in this box set. And um, I worked on this pretty much during the pandemic. It was a project that I could do in my studio and it began using a small press that I have. Um, the idea was to do uh, some relief prints. They were basically like woodcuts. They were actually uh, initially cut into acrylic um, and I didn't carve them. I worked out the drawings, uh, images, um, first by sketching them out and then transferring them to the computer and then working on them on an iPad Pro uh, using Procreate. And then finally I cut plates out of acrylic. This is, uh, this is one of the plates, what they look like, using a laser cutter, a Glowforge actually. And um, here's, one of the, here's one of the prints. And uh, what I liked about the process was that it let me keep changing the print because if I'd carved it, I'd be stuck with whatever was my initial image. But this way I could keep refining it and then cut out another plate and print it. But I wasn't thrilled by the quality of the prints themselves. I'm not a great uh, uh, printmaker itself. I mean, in terms of making the prints and making sure they don't have uh, mistakes and getting them to be all perfect. And so I contacted Dan Wood, who is, uh, has a letterpress shop in uh, Rhode Island, Providence, Rhode Island, and I um, commissioned him to do this series of prints. And Dan is an extraordinary uh, craftsperson and an artist in his own right. And he helped produce these just, I think, beautiful prints that have this kind of fantastic black. Um, one of the artists that has inspired me over the years is uh, Felix Vallotton, and um, I, I really love the kinds of blacks that are in his prints, and I really think that um, Dan got those similar, similar effect. Also, the letterpress um, prints, which are so beautiful, is they are kind of embossed, they're embedded into the paper, and I really, really love that. And so we've assembled those prints into these um, uh, boxes that have um, uh, gold foil printing on them, which is really special. And they're acid-free, archival, and uh, they're now available. And if you're interested in buying one, you go on to my website, jonathanweinberg.com, and there's information there about purchasing them that are quite affordable. And right now, what I'm going to do is switch the camera and focus it on to the actual prints and say some words about them. One of the things I think that are interesting about them is how I um, incorporate various art from the past. Um, I'm both an art historian and I'm also a curator and, a, and an artist. And it was <clears throat> very fun, or a lot of fun, to incorporate images from Masaccio or Windsor McKay or William Blake, various artists that I admire in each print. There's Picasso, you'll see, I'll point out some of the references. And I think it's kind of fun uh, for uh, people to look through them and see and figure out where, where I got some of the elements from the prints. And of course, um, this was something that older artists used to do in the Renaissance and, and all the way up through to the current moment, but in particular um, during the Baroque and, and uh, 19th century, is to uh, make little allusions or to borrow from other pictures. So there was a kind of tradition built around these stories in which you make uh, nods to other, other artists. And so I tried to do that in this series. It was a lot of fun doing that. Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll show you the work now, and um, uh, I look forward to hearing what you people think about it. The portfolio comes in an archival box. 
the first page is the caliphon, the title, and the signature, the number, and the edition. And you get the titles of the different prints. And also, of course, the DWR, I Letter Press, and Providence, Rhode Island, Dan Woods Press. The first print is the story of the creation, the seven days, and the eye of God. You see Adam and Eve and separating water from the sky and heavens and earth and these uh, sperm in the margin and the egg fertility of the first day that's and then he, the next print is the fall and Adam and Eve the snake here is inspired I think a bit from Harry Potter and then I also was thinking of a image in Windsor McKay actually from Little Nemo you see Adam and Eve at the top, at the Garden of Eden and at the end, and of course Masaccio, the two figures being cast out. This is Cain and Abel. The sun in the background comes right out of Van Gogh. This is the deluge, and there's full of stuff here. This is from the Wrath of the Medusa. There's a uh, sea monster that I stole from Wayne Blake and Maurice Sendak. There's a figure from The Last Judgment. I think there's another figure that comes from Winslow Homer. There's two. It's a figure being saved in the water. And this is kind of a cool thing. It, there's one very large print that opens up. It's Noah's Ark. You see all the different animal couples, elephants, and of course, it's got to be giraffes and hippos and tigers, and there are flamingos and ostriches. And of course, you got on the internet, you have to have a panda couple and bears, rhinoceros, rhinoceros, I guess, parrots otters, cats, birds, zebra, monkeys, pelicans, of course there gotta be bunnies and reindeer, lions, peacocks, oh, peahen and a peacock. This was a lot of fun to do. Actually, it took a lot of a long time to do this one. And it opens up so it's twice the size. This is the Tower of Babel. The little boy is playing with a sandcastle. This is the story of Sarah, who has gets pregnant when she's 100, and it's combined with Abraham seen that there's many stars in the sky. God says there's many stars in the sky. Is they're going to be your, your children, your heirs. This is Hagar in the desert. She gets cast out when Sarah finds out that she's pregnant. This is Lot and his wife and his daughters escaping from Sodom. And his wife gets turned into a pillar of salt. And I thought it would be fun just to show her as the pillar of salt. She's not supposed to look back, but she does, and she gets turned into this pillar. This, of course, is uh, the sacrifice of Isaac. That's the child that's, uh, that, that Sarah's pregnant with, and God is so cruel to tell Abraham that he's going to have to sacrifice that son. That's actually me and my husband, Nick. Nick is the angel stopping me from putting Isaac to death. This is Jacob wrestling with the angels. I stole these figures from Moybridge. And this is Jacob's uh, ladder. This is a dream that he has, these angels. Again, it's Nick going up to heaven. This is Joseph having a dream that he's going to be raised above his brothers, which makes them very jealous. And they put him in the bottom of a well and this is an unusual way of uh, depicting it. I think I kind of invented this. So you don't see Joseph, but he's looking up at his brothers in the bottom of the well. 
and screaming to them to save him. And then they, they think better of it. And they do pull him out of the well, but then they sell him into slavery. A lot of different things happen to him in Egypt, including he gets uh, sexually harassed by Potiphar's wife. And in the end, he's reconciled or brought back to his father, Jacob. And when Jacob is blind and an old man and they discovers, he thinks that, is, that Joseph has been killed but he finds out that he's still alive. It's a beautiful scene when these are all the other brothers watching on as 